Welcome to Lamis.com in our lab video series on Cisco Virtual Network Analysis Module. You can find a complete list of VNAM video on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. First of all, I would like to welcome you guys to our next Lab Minutes video series on Cisco Virtual Network Analysis Module. Since you're watching these videos, hopefully you have some ideas about Cisco NAM technologies and just want to learn more about the product and how to configure them. If not, at the very high level, Cisco NAM is a system that monitors your network traffic and provides you with very insightful information such as types of applications seen in your network and their statistical performances including voice and video traffic quality. You can also use NAM to perform network troubleshooting and packet captures. Since this is the first video of the series, I just want to mention that the series will be specific to VNAM on UCSE or UCS Express. So some of the configuration and features may slightly vary from other Cisco NAND products such as physical appliances and switch blades modules. The difference lies mostly in how you get the traffic data to NAND, but once the NAND sees those traffic, procedures to perform other configuration and traffic analysis are pretty much the same. So just keep in mind if you happen to deal with NAND in other form factors, but would like to leverage this video series for your learning purposes. We will begin our series by installing virtual NAM on VMware ESXi running on UCSE, although the procedures should also be applicable to any other x86 servers. Hopefully you guys are already familiar with the Cisco UCSE, otherwise we do have a dedicated video series on Cisco UCSE that you can watch, and they are videos between RS0071 to 75. First, let's take a look at our lab setup. And this lab setup, if you watch our UCSE video series, this is basically the same setup that we have back then. We just basically continue our configuration by installing virtual machine on existing ESXi running on UCSE. On the left-hand side, we have so-called a central site or headquarter that has our Windows 2012 sitting on VLAN 32, the IP 172.16.32.40. And this is where we're going to be performing most of the configuration from as, as we use it as a jump box. Right next to it at the IPF.4, we have a VMware vCenter that controls the ESXi server at the remote site, which is on the right hand side, on the other side of the simulated WAN network, is our branch number one. Inside the router, LM BR1 R1 is a UCSE model EN120E, which is a double Y EH WIC that has been installed with VMware ESXi and ready for us to proceed with the VNAM installation on it. We're going to be placing our VNAM on the internal or inside VLAN 1 with the subnet 172.17.1.0 slash 24 and we're going to assign the IP of dot 6 to our VNAM and dot 5 is our ESXi IP. All right, so before we can begin our installation, we need to make sure that we have fulfilled some prerequisites. With the VNAM version 6.2, and that's the version we're going to be installing in this lab, you need to make sure that your UCSE has the correct requirements. And first, it needs to make sure that it has supported operating system, and this can either be a VMware ESXi 5.1 or later, or a supported version of Red Hat KVM. From the hardware requirements perspective, the hardware requires to have at least two CPU, four gig of RAM, two or three network interface card, and these are virtual NIC, and at least 100 gig of hard drive. So let's validate and make sure that our system meets that requirement. I'm going to jump down to our VMware vCenter. We're going to lock into 172.16.32.4. And the ESXi server that we are working on is 172.17.1.5, which is this guy right here. If you look at the CPU core, we have two core, which meets the requirement, 8 gig of memory. So that works too. That's more than four, which is the minimum requirement. Virtual NIC, we can create as many as we want, basically. And for SSD, we have the capacity of around 180 gig. And that exceeds the 100 gig requirement as well. Okay, so we are good in terms of hardware. Then you also need to make sure that your UCSE is running CMC version later than 2.3.3. Let's validate that in our lab setup. The IP of our CMC is on the same subnet of .1.3. And currently we are running version 302, which is later than 2.3.3. Okay, so we have met all of the prerequisites. Next, you need to download and install OVA file from cisco.com. So let me bring up the browser, go into cisco.com. 
the support can look for virtual network analysis right here virtual appliance version 6.2 vname and by default the file comes with an evaluation for up to 60 days but you are limited to only 100 meg throughput right so we have 621 and you need to download the OVA file which is something that we already did so we'll save ourselves some time from downloading let me make sure that we have the exact same file on the desktop directory called vnam the file is right here okay nam app x86 621b once you have the file one thing that you need to configure it on the cimc is to enable the support for the nam so let me log into the cimc and this is under admin network and network analysis and this is exactly why you need to be running the correct version of CMC to be able to see this option right here. So network analysis capability, make sure that enable checkbox is checked and then save change. Yep, let's make sure that change is saved. Okay, it looks like it. There's one more thing that we need to decide before we get into the installation. And that is the deployment model. This basically determines how the network traffic will be delivered to the NAM. There are two types of traffic that needs to get to NAM. One is management, two is data. Basically, this is an exercise of mapping the NAM virtual adapter to the UCSE internal or external interfaces using the vSwitch, since we are dealing with the VMware ESXi here. All right, Cisco provides three basic deployment models. The first one is called, as you can see on the diagram right here, is one data port and one vSwitch. FYI, the M designate the management port on the virtual adapter or on the VNAM, and then the D designate the data port. D1 just means that it's the first data port. So for the deployment model number one, you have one data port and a single vSwitch. So that same vSwitch connects to both internal and external port on the UCSE. As you can see, GE1 and GE2 are internal port or interface, and then GE2 and 3s are external interfaces. The traffic will be coming in through the internal interfaces are the management and Ceph data, Ceph data being the Ceph traffic that's Ceph routed through the router. And the span data is basically when you have the external interface on the UCSE connected to an external switch that's configured as a span session. And then on the VNAM side, you have both management and data port connected to the exact same vSwitch. The downside of this model is that the traffic from both internal and external interfaces will flood the entire switch. That means that the management port might receive some of the span data traffic as well. So might not be the best option here. Then you have the deployment model number two, which use a single data port, but this time instead of a single vSwitch, you split them up into two different vSwitches. So basically the management traffic for the NAM will be coming in through the internal interfaces. The UCSE hit the vSwitch and then delivered exclusively to the VNAM management port. And then the span data traffic that's coming through the external interfaces on UCSE will be delivered directly to the NAM data port, which is where it performs all the traffic analysis. The downside of this is obviously the data port will not be receiving the SIF data which is normally being delivered through the internal interfaces. So there's something you might be missing in that model. All right, and that takes us to the deployment model number three, which is also Cisco recommended deployment model. And that's when you use two data ports as well as two V switches. So when you compare the model number three to number two, they basically looks the same. The only thing that we are addressing here is that we added another data port to the first V switch. So that way the NAM will also see safe data traffic from the router. But at the same time, keeping all the span data traffic completely separated from the NAM management port. And this is by the mean of second data port as designated with the D2 here. So in our VNAM installation, we will be proceeding with the deployment model number three, which is exactly what's being depicted right here. We're going to have two V switches, V switch one and two. I believe it could be zero and one just because the default one is zero. And that's where the default VM kernel management interface of ESXi is also connected to. We will be creating a port group 
for the VNAM management and first data port that will be connected to the internal interface GE0. And then we're going to have a second V switch with the, on a different port groups that maps the VNAM second data port to the external interface GE2 on the UCSC. And this will be used exclusively for span data traffic.